Hey guys, Hikaru Cosplay here. Today I'm gonna do a little tip and advice vlog regarding masquerades. Before we get started, no, I did not get into a fight. I decided to test out some makeup for Selena Kyle in the new Telltale Batman video game. It's a really good game. Loving it. Unfortunately, I didn't have any fake blood on me to work with, so it's not the most realistic bruise slash cut makeup, but I still like it regardless. I just used stuff that I had on hand to put it together. Now, before I get into this little tip video, I do want to preface this with um, the fact that I am no way an expert. I have done a ton of skits for masquerades and skit contests at cons and cosplay, but I'm no like best in show, number one, master category winner, competition extraordinaire. These are just tips and tricks and little bits of advice based upon my experiences in doing masquerades and talking to other people who are a little more experienced than me. The first thing is to make it interesting to watch. I mean, it is a show for, you know, goodness sakes. There are people who are coming, you know, taking time out of their convention to see these skit performances, so you might as well make it a good thing to watch, you know. Make it exciting, do like a dance, or, you know, don't just make it monotone or make it something that people may not necessarily enjoy or may be bored by, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, it's the same for judges, you know, they have to sit through like 20 skits and, you know, once like you're five skits in, it's like, okay, is this the same thing over and over again? You don't want to make it repetitive, you know, make it creative, make it unique. Number two is to make it easy to understand for people who haven't seen that series. It may be a popular series like Undertale or Sailor Moon. Even then, you don't want to go too deep into it. And if you do, or you do a niche series like Ever After High, or sometimes even Borderlands or even League of Legends, something that not everybody's going to understand, you want to make it easy to understand. Like write a little introduction during the introduction that the MC has to read. Maybe write like a little summary of what the series is or who the characters are. What, you know, pre you know, a little preface about the story of, that you're trying to do for your skit. And, you know, don't put too many inside jokes or spoilery or super knowledgeable things that people would need to understand, you know. As fun as it would be to put that inside joke in, no one's gonna laugh except for your group of friends. So, again, make it easy to understand for everybody in the audience and again make it enjoyable for them. Number three is talking about the types of skits there are. You know, there are just talking skits, there are dance skits, and then there are skits that kind of bring a little bit of both. Personally, my favorite is to do a little bit of both. It's good to have just a talking skit or to have just a dancing skit, but for me, I like to have a little bit of story. Why are they dancing? What's the point? You know, makes it kind of interesting and if you know, there's a time limit that you can't put those speaking parts in, you know, there's not that great of a balance, then make sure you write a nice story or some sort of a setup for the part that the MC has to read. Most cons have a little bit that the MC reads before they introduce the skit on. Always make sure to write a nice little story or setup. And people do listen to that, trust me, people do listen to it. Make sure you're practicing and you are actually choreographing your moves. Like, it's very easy to say, ah, we'll just wing it, we'll just improv it. Trust me, you'll get a much better skit out of it and a whole lot less stress if you practice and you think about the moves that you put into it. I have done my fair share of improv for skits and very little practice and, uh, Sometimes it looks good, other time, most of the time, not so much. It's just a lot cleaner the more you practice and the more you think about what you're going to do on stage. And as a result, it looks a lot nicer and more well put together and that you, there was a thought process that went into it. This is just my personal preference. I like to go first. Most cons will let you choose your order. Others will have it just go based upon the uh, order in which people entered. 
personally, I like to go first just because everybody's fresh, everybody's excited, they're very attentive, you know, 10 skits in, it's like, oh boy, when is this gonna end? How many more are there? And the first skit always kind of leaves a bit of a lasting impression. That's just me. I'm still really nervous and anxious whenever I do this, so it has nothing to do with confidence. It just has to do with I want everybody to really remember my skit. I want every the judges to be awake for my skit. I want, you know, to be memorable. And plus, also, so I'm not sitting during the entire competition going, oh man, I have five more skits and it's me. Oh man, I have two more skits and it's me. Like I'm counting down and that just makes me anxious. So it's nice to get it out of the way so I can enjoy the rest of the massacre. Next up is please secure your costume, pin it to pay tape, like put 50 pins in your wig. I've had so many costume and wig malfunctions both from me and from people I was performing with because just things weren't secure so just make sure it's all secured and if you think it's secure, secure it even more. Just trust me, it, uh, you do not want to have a boob pop or a wig to go flying off and if it does happen don't panic, just pretend like it didn't happen and keep going on with the skit. Next up is make sure you're getting backstage early. Usually they'll say an hour before the competition starts or 30 minutes or whatever, they'll open up the backstage or whatever lineup and they'll give you a window. Between this time and this time you gotta be there. I usually like to get there, you know, right at the beginning just so I'm settled, I'm relaxing, I can drink some water, eat a snack, make sure you're drinking and you're eating beforehand, go to the bathroom beforehand because if you're like me and you get nervous and you feel like you have to pee, you don't want to be doing the pee dance instead of your actual dance for the skit, you know? So it's just relaxing and it's also easier on the staff members who have to organize everything. You know, they're, you know, it's stressful for somebody who's coming in like super last minute and for check-ins. Just make sure you're going in early or some in the middle of that check-in time. Make it easier on both yourself and the people who have to check you in. Um, next up, make sure you're pre-recording your audio. If you have some sort of a talking portion of your skit that you have to do yourself, make sure you're pre-recording it. 90% um, of cons will not give you a microphone. It's really only the super small cons that have the option of giving you a microphone and even then it's awkward, you know, carrying it, you can't do your full thing and it may not sound as well, so it usually sound better actually if you pre-record it. Even if you're just using an iPhone to record it, it's still better than using a microphone. Unless you're doing a... The only time I've ever seen it work was um, two times at Genericon and one time at DerpyCon. DerpyCon 1, they were singing Love Live, so that makes sense that they would sing it live. <laughs> and the other two times at Genericon was an Elsa, who was doing a comedy talking thing. So it, you know, felt fresh and more like a comedy sketch, but she still had some pre-recorded sound effects to put in that she asked them to play when she said certain things. And then the other at Generic Con was a Joker cosplayer who did a whole talking speech thing, reenactment of Heath Ledger and all that, and he incorporated the MC with his skit. That was like his skit was incorporating the MC, talking to the MC, and talking with him and interacting with him. So. But again, these are really small cons. The bigger cons, they will not give you a microphone. You have to pre-record it yourself. The next up is, it doesn't have to be super flashy. Like, you you may see skits with people who have the backdrops and these big old props and these you know, transforming dresses and costumes and costume changes. It doesn't have to be like that. And let me tell you, I've seen plenty of skits like that who did not get best in show. It's about the cleanness, how clean and well put together it is, and also maybe what the judges are looking for. And there's also, usually there's a craftsmanship portion that goes into it. Usually the costumes get judged. Not, eh. But it's not gonna automatically get you the win if you do those big, super flashy things. As long as the audience and the judges enjoy it, that's what counts. Um, I've seen the big flashy prop ones, and it makes sense with how the skit is win, and I've seen them not win. So 
you don't have to do those big things. And if you are doing them, more power to you. Most cons will um, allow you to have storage, like store them backstage for most of the day or whatever, so you don't have to worry about getting them there at five o'clock or whatever, you have to be there. The next step is to make sure you're using most of the stage. Use the full stage if you can. If you're just standing around in one spot, it's kind of boring. So move around a little, obviously like not super crazy, but move around, make use of the space that's given to you because it usually looks just a lot better from a performance standpoint. Um, and all cons have different size stages, so you kind of have to be wary about that. Some of them are really small and some of them are really big. So when you're practicing, just make sure that you're kind of keeping in mind, maybe look at video recordings of the cons in previous years, and that should give you a good idea of the size of the stage that you need to think about. And again, the last two bits are just kind of, I've already talked about it, is don't freeze or panic if something goes wrong. Like if someone's wig goes flying off or a prop gets dropped, just keep going. Don't just uh, freeze. I've half frozen before with that happening. It's not good. Just keep it going. Pretend like it was supposed to happen and just pick up your wig and tango yourself off stage. And finally, make sure you're having fun. I mean, that's the point of masquerades. If you're getting too stressed out about it, just take a deep breath. It's okay. You know, it's okay not to do a skit or to cancel, you know, a week before the con or whatever. They, the earlier you cancel, the better, to be honest. They don't like, staff members don't like to hear you're canceling the day of or you just not even show up. It kind of throws everybody off. But, you know, just take a deep breath if it's stressing you out. Um, it's not really all about the awards and the winning. It, masquerades aren't as competitive or blood sport like as they used to be. So really, it's now just all about fun. Yes, awards are given out, but you can't focus entirely on that. Like, oh, yes, I want to win, I want to win, I want to win. Yeah, it's you know good to be competitive and be like, yeah, I want to win. But that's not the number one thing. The number one thing is putting on a good show and having fun with your friends and, you know, again, showing off your love of the characters. It's just like cosplay. It's not about the fame. It's about the fun. So thank you very much for watching my little tips video about masquerades. I hope this helps some of you and maybe even encourages or inspires you to enter in a masquerade in the future. Um, good luck and see you guys next time. Bye!